Heels are often associated with femininity and style, but did you know they were originally made for men in the military? Did you also know that men commonly loved to show off their legs in heels and stockings in the 17th century? Find out how we got stilettos from the technology of two world wars and how erotic photography changed how heels were perceived. Next on Technically a Conversation. Greetings, super friends. Welcome to another edition of Technically a Conversation. Here, we like to share an interesting topic with each other, which we've recently learned, and hope you find it interesting too. I'm one half of your hosts, Isela. Joining me as always is the ever-truthful co-host, Jose. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good. Good. How's your week been going? Good. I'm curious why you called me the ever-truthful, but I'm sure that'll play into this episode. Well, it, it's more about what we were talking about before the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is a conversation between you and I. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would never, <laughs> you know, I'm a vault. Brief reminder, we still have that wonderful opportunity to win your very own cool t-shirt. That is our Technically a Conversation t-shirt. Tell them what they got to do, Jose. It's very easy. If you're enjoying our show, take two minutes, leave us a review. Once you do, send us a screenshot to one of our socials. We're at Greetings TAC everywhere. We'll read it on the show. And once we get 25 reviews, we'll do a drawing and give the winner a sexy, (laughs) technically a conversation t-shirt. So check out technicallyaconversation.com or the show notes for all the deets. Yes. I feel like also with every iteration, sexy is just getting like deeper and deeper into it, right? (laughs) (laughs) I like to put a little bit of mustard on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always fun like that. (laughs) (laughs) And everybody, we got a new review, which we will read at the end of the show. So stay tuned. And to those of you that have already left us a review, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Shout out time. Here is the list, y'all. Again, you know this. The loyal, the royal, the queens, Elena and Erica. The Duke, Stephen B. Contra Zoom Pod Podcast and Gloria G. Thank you guys. We always appreciate you guys. We have like the best listeners, don't we, Jose? Indeed, we do. Let's kick off today's episode. We're just going to like play a little game though. Let's do a hypothetical world where you're going to take your girlfriend to a dinner date. Okay. Would you visualize her to wear heels on this dinner date? I don't know. That's a very good question. Probably not because I'm a midget. So I think that she would feel uncomfortable wearing heels. I see. Okay. So to expand a little further, do you feel like she would ever wear heels? Would you, do you think like your girlfriend would ever wear heels, this hypothetical? Yeah, I'm sure she would. Oh, okay. What if I told you heels were originally designed for military men? Cállate. It's true. <laughs> like Napoleon and his infamous heels. Right. Napoleon was also notoriously short. That's why he loved heels. And he looked super sexy with his heels too. Sexy, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> like our technically a conversation t-shirts. That's right up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Imagine wearing the t-shirt with the heels. Watch out. <laughs> That'd be like Spanish fly for him. Hubba hubba. <laughs> That's hilarious. (laughs) So this is exactly what we're going to talk about today. The history of heels. When were they invented and why? How did they go from men to women? We'll also touch a little bit on the medical ramifications of long-term use of heels. Let's begin at the beginning, shall we? (laughs) Always a great place to start. (laughs) Who and when were these beautiful leg elongating things invented. Persians started to wear small heels as early as the 10th century because they noticed while riding horses, their shoes stayed in stirrups more securely. Visualize something more like a slipper, but then it's got a really tiny heel, almost like a hook. This was mostly helpful 
because it provided the soldiers the balance they needed when they would stand up on the stirrups while riding the horse to shoot their bow and arrows. Yes, I did say soldiers, so they weren't hunting. To put it plainly, they were killing in these shoes. (laughs) And they looked great doing it. They looked fabulous. (laughs) 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 Moving forward to the 17th century, once the Persian soldiers were forced to build relationships with foreign leaders in Russia and Germany and Spain, Europeans went bananas for their militia shoes, quickly adopting the trend because it meant they would be perceived as strong and cool. To some degree, the heel back then was what the combat boot is today. And also the 90s, if you remember the 90s. (laughs) I still wear them today sometimes. I do too. That's, yeah, that's why I said it, the combat boot of today. If it meant that you were tough. After all, soldiers wear combat boots. And who's tougher than them, right? Me. Yeah. (laughs) To quote you, Jose, combat boots can be viewed as metal. They are definitely metal. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Once the European men made heels all the rage, the typical fashionable man would be also wearing stockings. Oh, (laughs) accompanied usually with some type of a short pant, which really resembled more like shorts. Hubba hubba. Showing off those calves. Yes. Men like to show off their legs back then, which is very different from today's fashion. I've seen some shorts on men that are long and wide enough that they really look like skirts on each leg. (laughs) (laughs) Although, to be fair, after a quick Google search, I did find a couple of rare pictures of men in short shorts that were beyond the 17th century. Perhaps you might remember, or some might remember, Tom Selleck getting out of his beautiful cherry red Ferrari in some pretty short khaki shorts in the original Hawaii Five O. Yeah, and pretty much every tennis player and basketball player in the 70s and early 80s, I would say. Well, but they weren't wearing it for fashion. This is like fashion, you know, like just like on the rig type of thing. Got it. Although they did look very fashionable. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Like Larry Bird, (laughs) those whitey legs, watch out. (laughs) (laughs) Those legs went on for days. (laughs) They sure did. (laughs) They were blinding. (laughs) Fast forward to the 1600s. Women start to wear men's shoes. We see you flaunting your legs. We want to get in on that leg game too. So, of course, we're going to start wearing men's shoes. A notoriously short man, very similar to who you mentioned earlier, um, Napoleon, making him a heels number one fan. King Louis XIV was so fashion forward, he made a law in order to remain the most elite. Check out what he did. He made a law. That stated, only those loyal to him, and if they were in his circle of nobility, could wear red heels. Proclamation. A red heel signaled wealth and power. This might sound familiar to our super friends, as this is similar to the expensive Christian Louboutin shoes. Let me define expensive, because that word is relatively subjective. A regular black pair of heels will cost a woman or a man. I guess, $800, one pair. These are more famously referred to as red bottoms. I don't know. Have you heard of red bottoms? I think we're thinking of two different things when I think of red bottom. I think you're thinking of like a spanked butt. Exactly. (laughs) When Jose says he's going to give you red bottoms, I don't think he means the shoes. (laughs) Just kidding. These heels have even made it into songs like Ariana Grande's Seven Rings, where she sings, happiness is the same price as red bottoms. I don't know if that's true, but I would like to find out. (laughs) (laughs) The character Lucifer in that wonderful Lucifer show also wore some very chic Louboutin dress shoes. Not sure exactly whose decision that was in wardrobe, but bravo, the suit always looked perfectly and complete with those dress shoes. Bonus fun fact, since we're on Laboutin, Christian Laboutin got the idea of red bottoms after he saw his assistant 
painting her nails red, a seductive and sexy color. Side note, what kind of a job is that where you're caught painting your nails? Girl, get back to work. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so going back to the 17th century, a man with heels inferred that he must be wealthy because these are not comfy shoes. So obviously he's not working in these shoes, right? Men didn't entirely like that women were taking that fashion and wearing their shoes. So a woman's heel became more narrow and the heel was thinner, while a man's heel was thicker, wider, and sturdier. But by the 1730s, us women were not letting go like usual. I'm kidding. And men didn't want to look feminine, quote unquote. So this is actually where men stopped wearing heels. While aristocratic men stopped wearing heels, other lifestyles of men were generally accepted to wear heels. Think of more the cowboy boot. Yeehaw! (laughs) And out of that original cowboy boot came out the Chelsea boot. So the, the original cowboy boot had more of a pointed toe and an angled heel, whereas the Chelsea boot had a rounded toe, still an angled heel, but more snug fit around the ankle. And that original cowboy boot, which morphed into a Chelsea boot, became super duperly popular. They were all the craze in the 60s and 70s, thanks to the Beatles and Beatlemania that was running rampant at the time. Before we jump to the 60s, let's continue on with our timeline. We're going to go back to 1730s. But before we do, let's hear a little word from our sponsors. Hey, I'm Will. And I'm Kat. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. If you love 1980s pop culture, you'll love 1980s now. Each week we discuss our favorite 1980s media. Like movies, TV shows, music. Yeah, we chat with our favorite 1980s celebrities. Let's see, we got a lot of those. Uh, And sometimes it's more meaningful, like affirmations with Dee Wallace. And other times, uh, Alex Winter tells us what Bill and Ted's phone booth smells like. Smelly. But it's always fun. And sometimes there's a surprise game, like right now, because once again, it's time to play... When you think of garbage, think of (laughs) Aki. No, I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) Oh, darn. I thought you had some. (laughs) (laughs) You don't have to miss the 1980s. You can have your 1980s now. Because that's the name of the show. Did it, you think people got that part? I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, this is Lafayette. And I'm Carlos. From Nerds Talking the Podcast. That's right. Where we talk about everything from UFOs. Yep. Comic books. I like movies. Uh-huh. Streaming services. Yeah. Conspiracy theories. Oh. Ghosts. Mm. Video games. Yeah. And more. Kick ass. All on Nerds Talking the Podcast. You can find us every Friday with new episodes on all digital platforms where you find your favorite podcast, Nerds Talking, the podcast. Now back to the show. Welcome back. How was your break? Good. Just checking out these new sponsors. I'm really looking forward to check out these new podcasts. Yeah, they both sound very intriguing. I'm super curious. How was your break, Isana? It was really good. Just hydrated. Got ready for the second half. Did you plug in an IV so you can hydrate a little bit more (laughs) profoundly? (laughs) It was not dire cases like that, I don't think. Okay, good. Thank you for your concern, though. Always. Did it look like I was passing out? Was Was I not bringing enough energy? I gotta, like, amp it up more. And with the heels! (laughs) No, just curious to see if you were IVing it up or not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just regular uh, bottled water, Ugh. which I hate drinking out of a bottle, by the way. We were last in the 1730s when men had stopped wearing heels. Let's dive back in. By the 1860s, we're fast forwarding a little bit. Women's heels were starting to become quote unquote sexy. And that was because of the invention of photography and the invention of photography gave rise, excuse the pun, to early pornography, and women were photographed with heels and heeled boots. So now it turned the perception of heels more erotic. (laughs) 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 Jumping ahead, 
to the 1940s if it wasn't for the technology to come out of fighting both world wars, then we would not have the ever sexy looking stiletto heel. It was at this time that a small piece of metal could be produced to join the heel of the shoe, the foot of the shoe, into the heel of the shoe. The stiletto was also a staple for the pinup women high and narrow heels. You, you remember the pinup girls, right? I do. Good, good. And who can forget Marilyn Monroe in the 50s? There's that famous picture of her in heels on top of a New York City subway grate with a giant waft of air that's lifting her dress. Do you know which one I'm referring to? Who can forget, Isela? It's honestly a beautiful <laughs> photograph. Although when you were talking about pinup girls, I was thinking about Betty Page. Oh, yeah. She was beautiful, too. And how did her legs not look beautiful with heels like that? And she also rocked the power bangs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the power bangs. I didn't realize that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm adopting that now. <laughs> Fast forwarding to the 1970s, we saw a resurgence with men in heels of some sort, but this was definitely a bit more of gender fluidity. History-making talent like Queen's frontman, Freddie Mercury, David Bowie, and Elton John brought into fashion a fun and colorful platform shoe. Because the heel and the platform are similar, I still want to point out that they're distinct, mostly because of the foot of the shoe. A heel will, ha will lay a little bit more flat, whereas the platform also gives extra height on the foot or the ball of your feet. Hopefully that makes a little more sense what the difference is a, a platform and a heel. Sure. But it's still very similar, so I thought I would give a small tidbit of their history as well. The true platform actually started in Japan up until the 1100s, and they wore these getas, G-E-T-A-S. Getas are small wooden boards that are acting like stilts on the bottom of their shoe, and they would wear them to keep from sinking in the mud of the giant rice paddies. So practical. Eventually, geishas wore the platform wooden shoes, changing their perception again into something a little bit more seductive. In Western Europe and England, there were platform shoes that could be strapped to your actual shoe. So it was more of like, a, like something you slide your shoe into. But this was mostly because prior to the invention of plumbing, human and animal feces lined the unpaved streets. This platform slide, if you will, would allow them to walk somewhere and not dirty their actual shoe before they walked into a home. So it was a shoe for your shoe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. These are the closest to what we would later see the platform shoes of the aforementioned David Bowie, Elton John, etc. Also in the 70s was a famous group of men wearing platform platforms, the band called Kiss. They famously talk about their seven inch leather heels. Yes, they do. They would come out on stage. And the article that I read said up to eight inch platforms. This is insane. Eight inches. Oh, my gosh. Uh. This might have been a contributing factor to frontman Paul Stanley's double hip replacement and knee replacements. So that sounds a little bit painful, too. <laughs> and that guy, he's like another Mick Jagger. Like he's always jumping around and everything on stage. So I wouldn't doubt it. Tons of energy, right? Yeah. And then on those things, those look heavy as fuck, dude. <laughs> they put on a great show though. I saw them. I think that was the concert that I saw right before the pandemic. And it's a bunch of 70 year old guys, but they still put on a hell of a show. I heard. I, I have um, a old uh, acquaintance that went with her husband and she had surprised him with tickets. And yeah, I heard it was a fantastic show. Definitely. In the 80s, we were gifted one of the most talented men, Prince, who also popularized a heel boot. Definitely a lot more modest heel than what Kiss was sporting, <laughs> but still, nonetheless, a heeled boot. In the 90s, we saw Spice Girls bring back the platforms. If you want to be my lover, right? That girl? Or that, those girls? <laughs> yep. Fast forward to 2017, sales of heels dropped and sales of sneakers increased. So we can't entirely blame COVID on killing the heel, as this seems like this was already on the decline, like our bad memories. I'll say. 
Mine is definitely terrible. Yeah, I know. What? I'm just kidding. Although I can't say since COVID, I don't think I've put on a pair of shoes. It's always just been tennis shoes. Yeah. I, the first time I wore a heel, it was so weird and it felt so foreign to me. Even just putting on pants was like weird. I was like, what is this around my waist? Ugh. <laughs> that's, but that's for a different podcast. <laughs> mm. I, I. <laughs> <laughs> that's technically a conversation after dark. After, yeah, after midnight. <laughs> that concludes the timeline to pretty much present day. How do you feel about the timeline of heels? Tell me your thoughts. No, it's definitely educational. Did you know any of any of this craziness? I knew some of it. I knew that it was soldiers that used to wear it. I knew about Napoleon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah King Louis with the red bottoms. Now you, now you get to know about the red bottoms. There you go. So are heels going to return now that lockdowns have lifted somewhat? A recent article, January of 2022, did confirm that sales of women's heels were back on the rise. And an article from May 2022 states a study finds women who wear heels are perceived as more attractive, more feminine, and of a higher status. Let me ask you, Jose, do you agree that a woman in heels looks more attractive? I think it depends on the woman. Oh, that's true. Like if she's ugly, she's ugly. Mm, I think I look at more than that, but I don't think it's the heel that makes the woman. I think it's the woman that makes the heel. Interesting. But I will confess though, I'm the type of guy that I never pay attention to heels or to nails unless like the nails look gross. <laughs> okay. Just because I have like a whole hygiene thing, which you probably wouldn't imagine from looking at me. Oh my God, that's not true. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but yeah, normally heels and nails are the probably the last two things that I look at in a woman. Interesting. I do look at shoes because I want to know if they're practical, you know? Obviously not like heels, right? I'm, I mean, although I always look at heels, I feel like, oh my God, this is like a really nice pair. I'll even compliment women if I see like a really cool pair. But keeping with that study, would you agree with the study that a heel might perceive a woman as more feminine? I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. Sure. Uh, do you agree that a woman in a heel would kind of signify that she is of a higher status? I don't think so, no. No. Interesting. All right. So I'll tell you about the study had 448 college students from the northeastern part of the U.S. They were shown pictures of two silhouettes, one of a woman in flats and one of a woman in heels. There was no significant difference to how the participants rated the two in personality or in intelligence, friendliness, affectionate, or successful. But those other three was really where it made a difference for some reason. Yes, they look great. And I've often said, a heel makes me feel what most men have said a properly tailored suit feels like to them. Like it makes them feel a little bit more attractive, but it does come at a price. So before we get into the heel talk of, you know, like the medical ramifications, what's that article of clothing for you that like, hey, this makes you feel a little bit more like, all right, very like, oh, you can tell by the way how you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I always dress in... And jeans and t-shirts. If I'm home, it's usually sweatpants and t-shirts. But yeah, I guess when I have to go to like a wedding or something and I dress up, I do definitely feel more, um, I guess more elegant would be the word. Yeah. There's like a little pep in your step. There's a little swag. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. All right. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, like the way that people dress and stuff like that is not important. I mean, I see that as, as them being comfortable and, and it being a reflection of their personality, but you know, I, I wouldn't call somebody, oh, that person is low class because they're wearing a t-shirt and jeans or whatever. I'm just thinking, well, that person is sensible and they're wearing something that's comfortable. But I don't want to poo-poo on anybody. I don't want to yuck anybody's yum, as they say. So, you know, if that's something that people enjoy, then more power to them. But that's not something that's ever really been important to me, if that makes sense. 
It it completely makes sense. Yeah. I I would hope that people first look at the person and, you know, maybe the things they're wearing like later. So that's good. No, that's definitely good. All right. So let's wrap this heel talk up with a bunion party. Ain't no party like a bunion party. <laughs> I'm Leg, back, and foot pain are very common complaints. Long-term wear of heels can change the structure of your foot, too. <laughs> this is where you, you have the, um, the cause of, like, bunions, of hammer toe, neuroma, all which can require surgery to correct. Bunions, they are not a good look, guys. Or guys and girls. <laughs> I'm just going to say in general. <laughs> And what's funny is when I was reading one of the articles, just as a side note, it said something about like, you know, how when the bunion starts to form, like this big joint starts to like grow out. And I could have sworn it said something. I was reading too many articles at this point because I was like, wait, did it say you're going to grow like a six six toe? (laughs) But it it looked like it was growing a six toe because it was like getting all misshapen. And that's not attractive. Come on, girls. No, but hammer toe does sun metal. (laughs) <laughs> until you look at it and then you're like, ew. Yeah, I've never heard of that term until right now. Oh, man. I would say look it up um, at your own discretion, please. Also, ballerinas, uh, professional ballerina feet. Hammer toes. I think they're beautiful. I don't, I don't know what it is exactly. I just know that those poor girls, they really beat up their feet for our benefit because what they do is really art. Well, if they do it right, right. <laughs> Heels also affect your posture because as your body leans forward to maintain a center of balance, your upper body has to lean back as a big counterweight. And the taller the stiletto will force you to bring down the center of gravity at your hips. Hello, Paul Stanley. That's probably what happened there. Thus causing an unnatural curvature of your lower back. Stilettos are a bit more of the dangerous heel, both for stability and it's harder on the foot because of the weight distribution is so concentrated on such a small point. It also affects your feet most visibly because it causes calluses and corns. Uh, Sad. So legs, your back. Lick my pussy and my crack. (laughs) No, gross. (laughs) It's not not what I was going to say at all. (laughs) Oh, okay. I I thought... We're going to go with that song or something. <laughs> <laughs> All that to say that just be selective when you wear them. Hopefully they really are just for special occasions. And in summation, the heel and its varied purpose, starting with military men, ended up with women strutting their heels. Uh, and most women, right, for like fancy events at weddings and met galas or any gala, really. This is definitely the most times I've ever said the word gala. (laughs) So let's wrap it up there. (laughs) We've got a review, Jose. Let me read it. If you are a curious person and wonder how things work or want to know about old folklore stories, then this podcast is a must listen with two exclamation points. Love the enthusiasm, by the way. Want to learn about Deja Vu or La Llorona too? Yep. Isela and Jose talk about these topics. So interesting and fun conversations. Thank you, Gigi Virtual Solutions. And I think that deserves our super friend of the week. It's got like a little 70s vibe. I'm totally into it. Did you notice? It's very 70s, yeah. (laughs) I would say it's platform shoe 70s. I'm just kidding. Uh, I imagine like a whole orchestra just like going at it and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Glenn Miller. I don't know why. (laughs) (laughs) Well, congratulations, lovelies. You've done it again, folks. You've learned along with us. Next time you admire a pair of heels, hopefully you'll smile thinking its origins were for basically killer men. (laughs) We hope that you've been entertained by our chat and invite you to join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show... Please leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast now. Yeah. Follow us on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Snapchat. 
Snapchats all the. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're not in Snapchat. No, no, erase. <laughs> <laughs> At greetings, T-A-C, email us at greetings, T-A-C, at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669 if you have a story to share with us, or if you just want to say hello. 